Police say multiple people were shot in southeast Albuquerque overnight, and they're still looking for the shooter. It happened just after midnight at the Navajo Lodge near Broadway and Trumbull. All of the victims are stable. Police say they do not have a suspect in custody. We'll bring you the latest information as it comes in, both on air and online. An APD officer is in trouble with the law, accused of beating his stepson. State police officers met with the boy at Edgewood Middle School Friday. They say they saw several bruises on his body. Investigators say the child told them his stepfather, St Skylar McClaskey, and his mother abused him. APD says the officer has been with the department since 2006. Right now, he's been stripped of his badge, gun, and patrol car and is on paid leave. We'll have more on this case coming up in the next half hour. The family of a seven-year-old shot and killed by her own father in his Rio Rancho home is looking for help. Police say Victoria Gabaldon was killed by Leonard before he turned the gun on himself last week. If you want to help out the family, there's now an account set up at Wells Fargo under the Victoria Nicole Gabaldon Memorial account. A bipartisan group of New Mexico lawmakers is pushing to close a loophole in the state's child porn law after a court ruling last year. According to the state Supreme Court, someone caught with those illegal images can only be charged with one count no matter how many pictures they have. Judges asked lawmakers to fix the law, and there's now a proposal to do just that. It sends a message that New Mexico is not going to stand for this. If you engage in this type of behavior, and we will prosecute these individuals to the full extent of the law. The proposal is set to get its first hearing this coming week. Police say a young woman is dead after a suspected DWI crash. It happened around 4 yesterday morning in Lemitar, just north of Socorro. State police say 21-year-old Jasmine Perez died in the rollover. 22-year-old Anthony Padilla was taken to UNM Hospital. No word on his condition right now. Investigators say they aren't sure who was driving, but they do believe alcohol played a role in the crash. Well, people in the South Valley got together yesterday to battle stereotypes. The annual event is called South Valley Love. It recognizes men from the South Valley who are making a positive difference in people's lives. Those behind the event say often South Valley men are portrayed as violent and criminal, but it's not a fair picture. That's one story, and I understand why that's a story that is easy to kind of promote in the media, but the stories that we live on a micro level every day, person to person, are really a lot more um, complex and meaningful and beautiful. There are good people everywhere you go, South Valley included. I am actually an uh, organic farmer associated with Valle Encantado Farms, uh, a nonprofit organization. So we brought some produce out here, uh, just some carrots and turnips, just to, you know, uh, like I said, spread the nutrition to all the families. This was the event's second year. Well, some volunteers spent Valentine's Day giving the Bosque some love. Crews joined the My ABQ Millennial Project and spent the day picking up trash. They focused on cleaning an area near Bridge Boulevard by the river. Almost 60 people volunteered, also painting over graffiti. Well, some are putting more pressure on investigators to classify the murders of three young Muslims as a hate crime. But many may be disappointed to hear it could be months before they decide if a hate crime was committed. Vicente Arenas is in North Carolina. The murders in Chapel Hill have made North Carolina a focal point for a worldwide debate over questions of religious intolerance and cultural bias. More than two million tweets have already declared the killings a hate crime. Nami Barakat's son is one of the victims. You think this was a hate crime? Absolutely, no doubt about it. My name is Dia Barakat. I'm a dental student at UNC. Barakat, his wife Yusor, who also wanted to become a dentist, and her little sister Rezin, a student at NC State, were murdered in Chapel Hill on Tuesday. Their neighbor, Craig Stephen Hicks, who had an arsenal of weapons in his condominium, has been charged with the killings. A global outcry began after police announced the motive for the shooting was a dispute over a parking space. But police and federal investigators say they have not ruled out the possibility of a hate crime. Joseph Kennedy is a law professor at the University of North Carolina. How hard is it to prove a hate crime? It's very hard. It's always hard to get into someone's head. It's always hard to prove motive. Kennedy says prosecutors will have to prove the main reason the students were killed was because of their race, religion, or another protected status. 
It's not enough if it's one of the reasons. It has to be the main reason why they committed the crime. That you can't prosecute someone for a hate crime simply because of past hate speech or even because of membership in a hate group. North Carolina does not have a felony hate crime charge, though it is a death penalty state. Prosecutors may be able to make a case for the death penalty even without establishing a hate crime occurred. Still, leaders at this mosque are hoping to meet with federal investigators next week to make their case. They say it's important to them to prevent other Muslims from becoming victims of similar crimes. Vicente Arena, CBS News, Raleigh, North Carolina. A family in Washington state is filing suit after a deadly police shooting. Police say Antonio Zambrano Montes had been throwing rocks at passing cars and then police on Tuesday when officers shot and killed him. The incident was caught on video sparking protests yesterday. Zambrano Montes can be seen running from police and putting his hands up before the shooting. His family has filed a $25 million claim against the city, alleging the three officers killed him execution style. A county coroner says he'll order an inquest into the shooting in hopes of diffusing the rising tension. Police say multiple people were shot in southeast Albuquerque last night and they are still looking for the shooter. This happened just after midnight at the Navajo Lodge near Broadway and Trumbull. All of the victims are stable. Police say they do not have a suspect in custody. We'll bring you the latest information as it comes in. An Albuquerque police officer is in big trouble, accused by state police of beating his 12-year-old stepson. We've learned more about that case and about a warrant that officer had from another case. News 13's Emily Younger has the details. Officer Skyler McClaskey has served the Albuquerque community for more than nine years, but APD stripped the 31-year-old of his badge. McClaskey and his wife Jody are accused of beating Jody's 12-year-old son inside their Tejeda's home this week. He met with the child and he observed a few bruises on the child. State police were called to Edgewood Middle School to help with the CYFD welfare check. The boy told police his stepdad, Skylar McClaskey, slapped him after he pinched his younger sister. Police say McClaskey flipped the boy onto his stomach, placed his knee on the 12-year-old's back, and struck him again and again. According to a criminal complaint, the middle schooler tried to escape McClaskey, but he tripped over a dog. Police say the cop held the boy down again and continued to hit him for several minutes. His mom, Jody, is accused of then grabbing him by his hair and attempting to slap him. It's terrible that these things are take place and happen, and definitely uh, we hate to hear that it possibly involves someone in our law enforcement community. It turns out McClaskey also had a bench warrant. It's tied to a 2012 case out of Santa Fe County where he allegedly wrote a bad check. APD released the following statement. The department has no tolerance for these types of allegations. State police say McClaskey won't get any special treatment. We're going to investigate it to the fullest no matter who it is, no matter what their employment is or, or what their status in society is. Emily Younger, KRQE News 13. McClaskey is now on paid leave, but an APD spokesperson says he will be fired once he's indicted. The kids are in CYFD's custody. APD says because nobody in the department knew about the bench warrant, it now plans on checking employees' driver's licenses each month just in case. A Roswell police officer was sent to the hospital yesterday when investigators say his car collided with another as the officer responded to a call. It happened around 4.30 yesterday afternoon at Alameda and Sunset. Police say the woman driving the other car was not injured. It's unclear who was at fault. Police have not named the officer but say he has only minor injuries. The man who Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies say led them on a high-speed chase made an appearance in court yesterday. Deputies say on Friday morning, 22-year-old Dakota Cook and his girlfriend stole a car in Gallup. A deputy later tried to pull Cook over on I-40 near Tahajali, but Cook drove off, hitting speeds over 100 miles an hour. The chase came to an end when Cook crashed near Coors and Ladera. Yesterday, the judge said Cook is a flight risk and a danger to the community, so he kept his bond at $50,000 cash or surety. 
Residents and organizers of the tent city in Borellis are getting together to discuss the makeshift neighborhood today. The Borellis Neighborhood Association offered an empty parking lot on 2nd and Santa Fe to the homeless after they were booted out of their old location. But some are saying they don't want the homeless in their neighborhood or near their homes. The owner of the lot also says he never agreed to let the homeless camp on his land. They're meeting today at Casa Borellis from 3 to 5. They are inviting the public to give input. The city has already begun construction on a new multi-use trail spanning from the Central Bridge to I-40. But now one city councilor wants to stop the project. City Councilor Isaac Benton is sponsoring a resolution to put a stop to the construction immediately. The resolution says the city of Albuquerque did not publish a final report on the environmental impact of the trail before starting work. In the resolution, Benton demands the city get public review and comment on design options before deciding on a final plan. It also calls on the city to submit a final report to the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District. The city says it did hold public meetings and that environmental studies were conducted. Some New Mexico airplane pilots and their passengers checked out Spaceport America near Truth or Consequences by landing there. It was the first ever public fly-in at the futuristic spaceport. News 13's pilot reporter Bob Martin has the story. Wind 320 at 7. It was a small group, just the first 10 pilots to register online and fork over 500 bucks per plane. Bring as many passengers as you wanted for an exclusive opportunity a personal tour and land your plane at America's first purpose-built spaceport. And being able to first of all fly in and get it from a bird's eye perspective was amazing. This is where Virgin Galactic pays a million dollars a year to someday launch tourists into space. If everything would have worked out here as originally planned, this spaceport would be jam-packed right now with space tourists and rocket ships. But that's on hold following the recent crash of Virgin's first spaceship for tourists. Without the user fees from rocket rides this year, the spaceport is $1.7 million in the red, asking taxpayers to cover that. Executive Director Christine Anderson told fly-in visitors she's recruiting other aerospace business. We're looking at drones as well. Uh, there's a lot of new drone activity going on, and not just the big ones, but the smaller ones. One company that has already built its own launch site here is SpaceX. They will test reusable boosters here this year. Up Aerospace will also launch another unmanned rocket. Fly-in participants said they figured the spaceport could hit some rough spots. I think eventually it will pan out and uh, eventually they will start flying space tourists and I think a lot of people are looking forward to it. So it was amazing seeing what they're doing out here, where they've come from, where they're going to. Just how successful the drive for new business will be and how long Virgin Galactic will take to start flying here remain uncertain. At Spaceport America, Bob Martin, KRQE News 13. When its new visitor centers open, the spaceport plans to provide more opportunities for school kids to come visit and learn. Some interactive exhibits will include a G-Force simulator. The deadline is here for people who still need to get health care insurance. Today is the final day to sign up for insurance on the federal marketplace. Those do, who do not have health insurance face financial penalties of up to 2% of your income.